Hey everybody, welcome back. My name's Tim and this is Athena. She's our little Burmese python who is all over the place. And the timing is pretty bad here. There's a pretty high likelihood she might poop on me during this video. So we're gonna try and get it done before then, but we'll see. But today what we wanna talk about is some of the things that go into producing YouTube videos, particularly with animals, particularly when you're doing it by yourself. And some of the things that we are doing currently in order to up our production value, get some better, more interesting, some cleaner, more professional looking videos out there. So we've got a lot of stuff to go over today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now really quick before we get too deep into this, quick shout out to US ARC, uh, United States Association of Reptile Keepers. If you guys aren't currently members, I strongly encourage you to go to usarc.org and see everything that they do for us as animal keepers. They definitely need our support. Memberships are really manageable for most folks and the numbers really do matter. So please, when this video is over with, I've always got the link for usarc.org and their YouTube channel down in the description go check them out. Uh, they really need your help. They've had a lot of big wins here lately, but next year is going to be coming around and we're going to need everybody's support then as well. So with that being said, I've had a couple weeks here, probably two or three weeks where, man, the schedule has just been insane. A lot of you guys know I work a day job and then after that I come back and take care of the animals, clean enclosures, feed, produces YouTube videos, and we've got a library of over 300 uploads at this point, which is really cool. Um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground in those 300 episodes in almost two and a half years. And one thing that's kind of um, unique is that the first two years of that, I did all of this on a cell phone. This, well, she's wrapped around it right now, but um, I recorded everything on a cell phone. Just got some really cheap mics and things like that to use with it that I just wasn't happy with. And thanks to our Patreon supporters who we are very grateful for. We've got some really great folks on there. But, you know, since we do any, don't do any breeding or selling or anything, we lean heavily on things like that. And they've really been instrumental in helping us to upgrade our recording equipment, upgrade our sound, upgrade the types of things that we can put in. But the thing is, is you can have the best equipment in the world, and if you don't know how to use it, it's useless. <laughs> so that's one thing that I've that I've seen and I've been learning is you can take a pro videographer, photographer, give them bottom rack equipment, and they can typically do better than a novice that's got the best gear on the market. So that's what we've been focusing on a lot here the last couple of weeks, uh, about the about the last month or so. Um, I've got. A fairly decent, it, it's a starter camera. It's Canon M50 Mark II. It's a crop sensor camera, like a four or $500 camera. It's not bad, that's what I'm recording on right now. Um, but I've managed to upgrade some lenses on it, uh, upgraded some software. So those tools I've got now, now the only thing that I've got to work on is my skills. So that's what I've been working on here. Um, and oddly enough, my train of thought with that, is that instead of just running around taking pictures of anything and, and coming in and editing and all that stuff, um, I'm starting my practice with bird photography mainly. Um, I'm finding that bird photography is about as difficult as it gets. And we're starting to make some strides. I'm learning a lot about how to process the videos, how to set up the camera, and how to really capture all this stuff. So. And if you guys follow me on social media, you're seeing them, you know, as I edit this stuff, as I get the good, good pictures out, I post them up there because, you know, if nothing else, I want to see a record of progression um, so that I can kind of look back at the older stuff that I did and say, oh, okay, yeah, you can see how things got progressively better. So we're getting close, starting to get a grasp on the basics with that. Um, and as soon as I get comfortable, I'm, I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks or so, 
Um, I should be fairly comfortable with getting things, you know, the way I want them and being able to execute these basic tasks, um, which aren't really so basic when you're talking about catching wild birds flying around all over the place. It is a trick. But my rationale behind that is that if I start focusing on learning the most difficult thing that I can think of, when it comes time for me to get the snakes outside and I've got to get it just right with a snake moving around in the grass, it's going to be a piece of cake compared to trying to catch a swallow going by me, you know, on a 300 millimeter zoom or something like that. So that's what's taken up a whole lot of my time here lately. And I know we've, we've started the handling series with the Tegu and you can look back and see those. We've got several videos out with him. Uh, the progress has been kind of slow. He's uh, th there's not anything really dramatic. It would just be repeats of the previous videos that we've been putting out pretty much. Um, you know, he's getting a little bit better. He's not quite as bitey and things like that. But when you're working with lizards like that, sometimes it's just a slow process. So we will be putting out updates on that as well. Moving forward here, after I get to the point where we're pretty comfortable from a photography standpoint, and I feel like I've got a good handle on it, then I'm going to start moving in and focusing on the videography part of it. There's a lot to learn. Um, you know, as far as generating really, really precise, clean B-roll, uh, producing, you know, the better, sharper videos, all of that, making them a little bit more interesting by putting a little bit more effort into editing. Because really, all I've done over the last couple of years is I may have a topic that we're talking about. You look through any of my videos, say we're talking about hook handling or something like that, hook training. Um, you know, I'll set the camera up and just talk into it and I'll start rattling off everything that I know about it, everything that's pertinent, you know? And um, so it, it's pretty much talking head stuff with animals in it. And it's such a shame because I've got all these amazing animals here and I would really like to take full advantage of the creative aspect of that. And, you know, really be able to put out some stuff where people can really see and really appreciate these animals in a really good light through really good videography and things and, and great pictures and up in the b-roll we've got you know outside of the camera i've also got since i do all this by myself and i typically don't have anybody to record for me you know i've got the tripod set up i've got a gimbal that i can set the camera up on and not only can i use that to stabilize while i'm out moving around and shooting video it's also got a tracking sensor on it. So all I got to do is gesture to it and it'll follow me everywhere I go. So it'll be a lot easier when we get outside and I'm trying to chase a lizard or a snake around the yard. I could just tell the camera to follow me and it's going to, you know, follow me. I don't have to worry about dragging everybody back into frame. So it's all these little things that are going to make a big difference. When it's a one man show, it can be kind of difficult to pull off, especially when you've got full-time job and then of course care of the animals and doing all the other stuff so it's a uh, it's a challenge but i really i really want to do justice to all of the folks that have supported the channel uh, that have you know been regular contributors through patreon and you know i've had a couple people make some pretty sizable donations that have enabled me to you know splurge that extra money on some of this equipment so i really want to um, really want to make sure that i'm putting forth the effort to learn it really well and get really proficient with it. So this is all going to make everything a lot better moving forward, going down the road. So I'm hoping that this third year, you know, and in October, we'll have hit three years on the channel. Uh, I really want this third year to be stellar. Uh, really want to start up in the video quality and start doing more on location stuff with more people, more collaborations. So. And it'll be a lot of fun to be able to have a setup out there where we can capture that stuff in a way that does it justice. So I think I'm going to get Athena back in her enclosure now because she's been really good and she hasn't soiled me yet. But uh, <laughs> she's such a sweet girl. You're such a good girl, ain't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to get her back home. And don't forget, guys, Jump down, like the video, get it out to more people, get subscribed to the channel. Yeah, that gets it out to more people. If you enjoy what we're doing, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming down the pike here as we go. And definitely appreciate you guys hanging out and you have an outstanding day. And we will see you Saturday night at seven o'clock Eastern for our live stream. And for our contributing Patreon members, we've got our Zoom call at 830 Eastern 
uh, immediately following the live. So we'll catch you guys later. Have an outstanding day and uh, you guys take care of each other.